Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Matthew uh, chapter 20, beginning at verse 1 and reading through verse 16. It is found on page 1161 in your pew Bibles, if you'd like to follow along there. The kingdom of heaven is like this. Once there was a man who went out early in the morning to hire some men to work in his vineyard. He agreed to pay them the regular wage, a silver coin a day, and sent them to work in his vineyard. He went out again to the marketplace at nine o'clock and saw some men standing there doing nothing. So he told them, you also go and work in the vineyard and I will pay you a fair wage. So they went. Then at 12 o'clock and again at three o'clock, he did the same thing. It was nearly five o'clock when he went to the marketplace and saw some other men still standing there. Why are you wasting the whole day here doing nothing, he asked them. No one hired us, they answered. Well then, you go and work in the vineyard, he told them. When evening came, the owner told his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, starting with those who were hired last and ending with those who were hired first. The men who had begun to work at five o'clock were paid a silver coin each. So when the men who were the first to be hired came to be paid, they thought they would get much more. But they too were given a silver coin each. They took their money and started grumbling against the employer. These men who were hired last worked only one hour. They said, while we put, put up with a whole day's work in the hot sun, Yet you paid them the same as you paid us. Listen, friend, the owner answered one of them. I have not cheated you. After all, you agreed to do a day's work for one silver coin. Now take your pay and go home. I want to give this man who was hired last as much as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do as I wish with my own money? Or are you jealous because I am generous? And Jesus concluded, so those who were last will be first, and those who were first will be last. May God bless the reading of his word. <clears throat> you know, when we read this parable, it is so often difficult to read it and not think that somehow this is unfair. Perhaps it's because there have been times in your life when you have been made to feel that the way you were treated wasn't fair. You know, it's the result of some experience that you've had. For example, you know I have a younger brother, not that much younger, one year. You would be surprised if, you're, if there's only a year's difference in you, what can happen? what doesn't happen and sometimes how fair it seemed how unfair it seems to be it seemed like i didn't ever get to do anything but what he got to do it at the same time i did one of those as an example is you know when you are a boy where i grew up a rite of passage is to have a bb gun you want that bb gun and i would say can I have a BB gun? When can I have a BB gun? You're too young for a BB gun. And I remember the Christmas, I got a BB gun. And it was great, and maybe that was something that, that helped to reduce the, the unfairness of it. But that same Christmas, my brother got a BB gun. How come I was always too young to get it when I was his age, but it's okay for him to get it now? And it just really didn't seem right. And you, you know what happens is, is that when uh, we raise those issues as a child with parents, they have very few reasons that seem to be satisfactory in our mind. It just doesn't seem fair. Well, hopefully we grow out of that, those feelings of unfairness and sometimes even resentment to those, to the one who may have received the special treatment or even to those who gave that one the special treatment that we didn't think to be fair. We have that 
that ability, don't we, to think in terms of what we think is fair and what isn't. It's that sense of what is fair and what isn't that makes us sit up and take notice when we read this story. Because it gets right to our ideas of just what is right, what is fair, what is just. Especially if we, hit, if we think that the one, one, someone is being treated unfairly and is perhaps being taken advantage of. We understand that. Because deep down, we all look at these things from the view that we are looking out for ourselves and our own self-interest. That's what that little boy was doing when he didn't think it was fair that his brother got a BB gun when he did. And Jesus knows this and understands that this is where we come from. This is our point of view. And he's telling this story now. We go back over it for just a moment. The owner goes to town. He goes to the uh, square looking for those who will harvest the grapes in the vineyard. Now, if you have ever read books like The Grapes of Wrath or, or listen to certain uh, uh, stories, uh, maybe even watch certain movies, when day laborers, and this is, this is something that is very common in the past, maybe not as much today, but there are still those that hire themselves out as day laborers. But you don't have to go that far back in our history to come across those who hired themselves as day laborers. And the Grapes of Wrath becomes one of those stories that, that talks about those being hired to pick fruit in, in the vineyards. And there are always those people who figure it out. They, they just seem to have this sense. And whether it's because they're just, they, they just have observed and, and maybe they didn't get hired one day and they figured out what it takes to be hired. Or maybe it's because of brute force that they just shove everyone else off to the side so that they're right there in the front. There are always those people that always seem to be hired no matter what. If you happen to be fortunate, they will teach you the ropes so that you can become one of them. But that doesn't always happen. Maybe that's what has happened here. The day laborers, there's a group that knows exactly what to do in order to be hired. And so they are there. They get hired and uh, they, make the, they make their deal. It's a contract, it may be verbal, but it's a binding contract, they understand that. At the end of the day, you will be paid one silver coin. I'm agreeable with that, and they go start to work. Later that morning, the owner goes back and he hires another group of laborers. Why? Well, we're not really told why. Maybe it's because the crop was extra ripe and he knew that it needed to be gotten in now. You can't wait. There's that, that sense of, uh, of, of urgency. Maybe it's because there was a storm coming. You know, farmers can read the signs and, and uh, sensing there's, there's a change in the weather coming. We need to get this done. Otherwise, the crop will be destroyed. Maybe that's because the first group of, of pickers and, and maybe, you know, as there was a group early in the morning, a group mid-morning, and, and later throughout the day. Maybe they've run into unforeseen problems and, uh, and they can't do this. Or perhaps the, the first group and, they, and then they have influenced the others they got to the vineyard and they looked and they saw it is a huge vineyard. We can work here for several days if we do this right. We can guarantee ourselves not just a job today, but tomorrow and maybe even the next day. And so they, they either think that, uh, that if they slow down, the, the owner's just going to be gullible enough to let them do that. I mean, we don't know. It could be any or all of these things. 
It could be that the owner just was one of those people that wanted to see everyone working. He just wanted to make sure that, that everyone had something to eat at the end of the day. We don't know what took place. We just know that all any of these things could have been possible. Whatever the reason, the owner went back several times to hire others to come and help, including as, as late as about an hour before dark. And uh, what are, what's this group doing? Uh, what have they been doing? Did they not show up? Uh, they get up late. You know, some of us would probably have said they're just lazy. These are, are either the laziest or the least able to work of the whole group. And they get hired. Well, you know, any sane boss would pass up that last bunch because you're always looking to get the most for your dollar. But again, it's possible that the first ones out were watching out for themselves, taking care of their own self-interest by working slower than they should have. Whatever the reason, the owner has one goal, one goal only, and that is to see the harvest completed. Unless you have been there, you have no idea how driven a farmer can be when that crop, whatever it is, needs to be in and it needs to be done now. We assume it got done. At the end of the day, with all of this additional help, now it's time to pay the, the workers. Did you notice in the story how each group came to work? The first group came having a set wage. They agreed to the wage. They agreed that they would come and they would work for the silver coin. And that meant because it's now daylight or shortly thereafter, it's going to be a long day because you work until the crop's either all in or it's too dark to, to do anything. Time to be paid. They, they had a set wage. They knew what they were going to get. No other group is given that. Every, everyone else, except the very last group, is said, go to work, and I will pay you a fair wage, whatever that may be. The last group is just told, go to the, go to the vineyard and work. No guarantee of any pay of, at all. It's interesting that they did. Well, when payment is made, we start with the last group and work our way back the other direction. They get a silver coin. Can you imagine their hoots and shouts when they got that coin? We worked one hour today and we got paid a whole day's wages. And at the other end of the spectrum are those that worked hard all day long. And you know what they're thinking. Man, if this guy is this generous, can you imagine what we're going to get because we worked all day? And then they got what they agreed to at the beginning of the day. Doesn't really seem fair. Well... This week I came across these comments and Scott Hosey's comments on this passage. He, he quoted uh, from a sermon by Barbara Brown Taylor. And she says, she, she says, she asked the key question, when we read this parable, why do we tend so immediately to identify with the folks hired at the crack of dawn? Why do we so readily assume that when God's kingdom fully comes, we will be the ones tempted to feel upset in that we will also <coughs> excuse me, be shown to have been the hardest, hardest workers of them all? Who told you and me that we've been working for 12 hours? How do we know that just maybe our work totals the measly one hour after all? 
Barbara Brown Taylor imagines that in the parable, when the farmer improbably hands the one-hour pickers a whole day's wages, there must have been hoots of laughter and some, ain't we the lucky ones, good-natured backslapping among them. But then we conclude with these words, but on that great and final day when Christ shall come again and bring us to himself, we should pray not only that we will indeed discover that the grace of Jesus is more than enough to get us into the kingdom. We should also pray that when we discover that eternally joyful fact, the great laughter and joyful backslapping slapping will be our very own. Think about it. In Jesus' day, those that, um, that would have been hearing this, the ones who could have easily thought, how is it that we were not treated more fairly? Could have been the Jews themselves. After all, they are the people of God. They have been given this promise that they are the chosen ones, and now all of a sudden, others are being allowed in. Well, did you do your work? Yes. It was an agreed upon wage, was it not? Follow me, do, my, do what I ask, and you will be my chosen people. Doesn't seem fair that anyone else could be allowed in. That's right. Doesn't seem fair. And when they're paid their wages, they get all upset, and the owner replies, did I cheat you? Did you not agree to work the day for those wages? It's my money. Are you trying to tell me how I can spend my money? Well, yes, I guess, I guess I am. Because I want to tell you that's not fair. It's not fair that you gave them the same wage that you gave me. They didn't do nearly the work I did. They didn't do nearly the things I did for you. It just isn't fair that they get it now and they don't have to wait, that they don't have to do the work. You see, our sense of what is right hinges on what we deem to be best for ourselves. And we will always try to put the very best light on what we have done, what we are doing, Make it a way that we deserve this no matter how undeserving we really are. We use a very subjective standard of judgment. We use ourselves. Forget an empirical standard by which we might judge this. We judge it based on ourselves and what is, is either that which pleases me or is best for me and we think that's the true standard the truth is something else the truth comes when I understand what grace is and that's what this parable is really all about for the generous landowner is very gracious to those who have worked for him no matter how long they've worked he shows grace and mercy to them. We should be among those thinking, I am thankful that I am even in the field and considered worthy enough to be one of the pickers. I might not be one of those that pushes myself to the front or even have a dramatic role in the harvest. When you're doing something like that, there's one thing that you're looking for. It's that last ripe grape in the, in the harvest, in the vineyard. It's that last hay bale that goes in the barn. It's that last row of corn if you're picking corn. You want that very last one. That's, that's everything. You may not be the one that picks that last grape. You may not be the one that's, that's putting that last bale of hay in the barn. It doesn't matter. But everyone is excited when it happens. 
No, just be thankful that we have had a part in it. And realizing that no matter what our role is, that we are there because we have been called to that. Because so often, none of us go voluntarily to the field. The workers were all in the marketplace, all in the square, all in the courtyard, waiting to be hired, waiting to be called. So that when that happens, we realize, we understand that it's grace that called us. Called us to the harvest, called us to a task, called us to do something that is probably greater than we are because look how often the, the owner goes back to the market to hire people, to find people. But it is grace that is given by a generous landlord. And so instead of seeing ourselves at times as ones who think we deserve to be treated in a certain way, we should see ourselves as God sees us. Those who are in need of grace, those who are really undeserving, those who don't know a ripe grape from a, from a green one, it's grace, it's undeserved mercy. And it is given to us by a God who loves us even when, when we don't deserve it. Rewarding us not according to the work that we do, but according to the generosity of the Master. Let us pray. We come to you, Father. And we ask that you would help us, for so often we do have our standard of what is fair and what is right. And we forget that it is all about your love and your grace, your mercy toward us. But in that mercy, we ask that you would renew our, our heart as, as, having, as becoming a heart for you changing us, making us, making us the harvesters you desire. And whether we have been one of those first called or we're one of the last, that we do all to your glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.